Hello, everyone. Hope everybody's having a good summit so far with the fidget spinners and beer mugs. What in swag? What, what more do you want from a tech conference, right? There's fidget spinners? Yeah, I didn't see are. them yet. Yeah. <laughs> Find out on the booth crawl. All right, welcome to our session uh, on monetizing your applications using CF Abacus and billing engines. I am Pankaj Kumar, part of uh, SAP Cloud Platform. I'm joined by my colleague, Nick. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, Nick Milani, uh, VP of Strategy and Solution Management for the SAP Hybris Revenue Solutions, which consists of Hybris Billing and Hybris Revenue Cloud. So this session is all about converting uh, APIs or bits to dollars, right? Or if uh, our Bitcoin friends or Ethereum friends have their way, bits to bits, bits to Bitcoins. Um, when Nick and I were planning for this session and we came up about like, what should we use to monetize our APIs? I mean, if we look at, uh, it's, it's really easy to give like hello world examples, or we could have chosen something like um, monetizing storage or monetizing compute, which is really Cloud Foundry is about. Uh, or we, we are from SAP, the enterprise company, we could have chosen um, monetizing create sales order or hire employees, but that's, that's kinda, you know, okay, we do that for work, so let's take and if you have attended uh, uh, A.B. Karen's uh, session yesterday, she talked about the number four point was think big. So we went with sci-fi as a theme of our monetizing APIs. Uh, there's this uh, really beautiful, if you like sci-fi, a sitcom called The Expanse. Anybody has seen it? It's a, it's, it's, it's a very um, set up in the two, uh, 200 years from now where Interplanetary, okay, we didn't go intergalactic, we just went interplanetary. Travel is easy, and so our setup is that I am a ship of, a captain ship of an interplanetary ship, and then I need to use certain APIs from, a, uh, let's say, a travel organization where I, let's say, I'm going from Earth to Mars, and I need to reserve a space trip. Or I want to get pricing, maybe, you know, there are surge pricing involved where if I do certain ways, maybe stop at an asteroid in the middle, the pricing is different. So there's another API that we want to monetize. And then there are space ship APIs like get imagery that the spaceship is using. So those are the APIs that we will monetize and that's, that's the background we'll be working on. Uh, to set up further context, I'll, I'll, I'll have Nick speak on. Thanks, Pankaj, and I, I love the I love the setup for this. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, APIs everywhere, everything is a service, and uh, we are 200 years in the future here, but all of us are trying to make this a reality now, as you know. But in this ecosystem that uh, Pankaj just described, there are a number of different actors, and for the purpose of this talk, we've identified three major groups here. So you have your platform providers, right? These are the guys with the big spaceship. Um, Quite ironic, there's a big guy with a big platform down the road there that's already working out of a spaceship, so maybe this is not so futuristic anyway. But these guys have services and products on their platform. They charge end customers, and um, you know, they're, they're, they're the central point offering all these different types of services. Also in this ecosystem, you have external developers, right? They're the guys that are, the platform providers are trying to get on onto the platform. They're selling things as well via the platform. Uh, and when it comes to microservices, and this is one of the things we're focusing on today, they may have to actually pay for some other services they're using from other teams or other groups. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, uh, one we've seen internally at SAP here already, is that there's an internal development component. As soon as you have this garden of microservices, you need to find a way to keep all the different actors in the ecosystem adequately compensated. And it could be monetary, it could be non-monetary, right? But either, any, in the end, they're all gonna have their own different objectives and KPIs, and then they're going to be needly, um, they're going to need to be adequately compensated for this ecosystem to work. We are seeing some examples of this out there already. Perhaps some of you have already seen them. I mean, Netflix have talked a lot about their uh, microservice journey and some of the challenges they face, particularly when it comes to dealing with microservices created by many different groups. Uh, Twitter have some great content out there too. They actually went out and specifically built a system for the chargeback mechanisms. It's a really great presentation. We've got linked there, very, very detailed. Um, but one I've had, I guess, hands-on experience with was, is at SAP when we launched our uh, Hybris as a service platform, which is our a microservice marketplace based on the SAP Cloud Platform. It's all Cloud Foundry underneath. 
And we have hundreds of development teams at SAP, right? And we needed to figure out a way to adequately compensate all of them. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not so simple. All right. So, so what we are going to use for this is CF Abacus. I hope anybody uses CF Abacus or contributes code to it over here. Good. So CF Abacus is a, it's a building, it's a metering and aggregation engine. So when when you have an application that needs to be metered, so maybe you are calling certain APIs, maybe you want to store how much this. Uh, how much of the compute has been used or how much of the uh, persistent storage has been used, then you can measure that using CF Abacus. You essentially send certain calls to CF Abacus. So it's, it's a really neat solution that, uh, that has been developed in an open source way. IBM uh, and SAP has contributed uh, quite a lot of code to it. It's a set of um, about six microservices, one for metering, one for collecting uh, collect as a collector, then accumulation and aggregation. Uh, but why is CF Abacus important? Um, if you, you follow Cloud Foundry, there is Bosch. So Bosch is famous for helping you with day one and day two problems. Day one problem being how to get the system deployed properly with all the dependencies, and then day two, keeping it live. So I call it CF Abacus as the, solving the day 30 problem, meaning I need to build my customers. Maybe these are external customers, like SAP operates their platform, IBM has their platform, Google, AWS, so they need to build their customers at the end of the month or quarter. So that's the day 30 problem. Uh, it could also be that, let's say you are Comcast. Uh, Comcast had a great session yesterday. You are Comcast, and then uh, a lot of internal teams are using your APIs or you're using your uh, applications, and you want to charge back that internal allocation. So that's, those are the problems where CF Abacus will come in to meter APIs and uh, various basic primitives. What CF Abacus has certain limitation, and these were the constraints that they designed the system with, that it's not an invoicing or billing system, that you cannot send an invoice to a customer. For internal allocation, it's fine, like Comcast charging their internal developers. Uh, or internal organizations. But when it's uh, SAP or Google or AWS or, you know, or Pivotal, they need to send invoices to their customers. So that part is not covered by uh, CF Abacus. So then there are these billing engines, and we, we, we do our own dog food at SAP, so we have a commercial solution called Revenue Cloud, which is kind of the cloud-native baby of our much a uh, bigger solution called hybrid billing. So we use Revenue Cloud, and we, I will demonstrate uh, Revenue Cloud uh, in, in our demo. So one thing we need to understand, the difference between, let's say, when we are doing Cloud Foundry-like scenarios, subscription billing, usage billing, and when you buy, let's say, a product from Amazon. There, the difference is the continued relationship. When I buy something from Costco, I buy, and the transaction is over at that time, right? That's the buying a discrete product. In case of when I have, uh, when I buy a subscription from a provider, and subscriptions are not new. I mean, everybody has had newspaper subscriptions, I guess, from the time of Gutenberg, probably. Uh, but so subscription is not new, but the subscriptions are different from buying discrete products in the sense that you have a continued relationship that the, as you, you go along with the relationship, you keep paying for the product. So there's the concept of continued relationship. That's not there in Abacus. It's, uh, it's, it's there in billing engines or revenue cloud. Uh, and then CF Abacus acts as a calculator. It's a big calculator. Like it, it, it does not have a state in that sense that I did this transaction and now I need to move to another transaction. It will it will price the transaction, like I am going to do this API, and this is how much it's going to charge. But what about all the different kinds of APIs that I call, and now I need a consolidated invoice or a bill at the end of the month? So that's, those were the constraints around which CF Abacus was designed. It is metering, accumulation, aggregation. It's not billing engine. So that's what Revenue Cloud provides. So we have two sides, CF Abacus and Revenue Cloud. 
we look at what this architecture looks like, what we have is a very simple, I guess, fairly standard billing architecture where you have a, a user consuming services on the end and it could, could be users, it could be applications, it could be anything. It, it goes up in the cloud and then is metered uh, by CF Abacus in, in this case. Then after that, the billing engine kicks in, right? And uh, it, it's calculating things, it knows the contract terms, the pricing, all those type of things. And of course, then it ha uh, you know, creates the correspondence with the customer, uh, charges credit cards, other payment methods, whatever it is, uh, also follows up if they decide not to pay or can't pay or things like that. Uh, what's perhaps different here in this type of ecosystem with all these different parties is in the billing engines doing a lot of different things. It's taking a single transaction in and pot potentially creating five or ten transactions behind depending on who needs to get paid what based on what uh, the end user is doing and they don't necessarily see that part. It's all happened behind, the, it's all managed behind the scenes. So to solve this, uh, we decided to build a new solution based on our Cloud Foundry uh, Cloud Platform. Uh, on microservices, it was a very tough decision. SAP, we, you know, we've been around a long time. We have a lot of assets in this space already, but we decided we needed to sort of make this sort of dramatic shift to get to where we need to be and, and to sort of lay the ground, the, the foundation. Uh, and we also re-looked at what the scope means in, in, you know, in this era for, for a billing solution. We decided on the quote to cash scope. So it's everything from order configuration. So when we're talking about APIs and you know, subscribing to APIs or buying APIs, it's quite basic. But consider the fact that many of our customers uh, bundle in physical products, digital products, uh, APIs themselves, all things together, and we have to manage the pricing and the discounting and the rebates and all those type of things together. So that's the quoting process, quite complex. Also the order management, right? So activating uh, things in provisioning systems, setting up tenants, what, depending on whatever's being sold, there's obviously a lot of other things that need to happen there. Shipping out uh, physical goods in some cases, and then of course all the downstream billing processes which we're focusing on. In enterprise scenarios, there's also a lot of integration to other, other systems. So we've got a few examples on the screen. It's not an exhaustive list. Uh, commerce interfaces, uh, sorry, commerce systems, so to allow customers, whether it's B2B or B2C, to go and buy and subscribe to your services, like any marketplace is one example. Uh, us in SAP, we do a lot of B2B as well, so we need to uh, hook into CRM, so when our direct sales go out there and, and do business, uh, service reps, and also back-end systems. So if you, if you are sending out physical products, you do need to uh, you know, connect into your fulfillment systems and of course finance, right? Because not much in the enterprise gets past the CFO unless you have a nice story. Um, so we designed this to uh, cater to a, a broad base of our customers. So I'm, I'm trying to build something for thousands of our customers, not just you know, uh, a single digit number. You can go out and build this thing for your customer, your, uh, specific problem and like Twitter and some others have gone out and done that. What we're trying to do is build something more generic that can be applicable to uh, many of our customers. What do we go to market in? 25 industries now? I don't know, I always lose count, but you know, trying to build this to a, for a very broad base of customers. All right, so now uh, let's, uh, the demo time. So the, the way we have structured the demo is that I have Abacus running locally on my no notebook. I could have run it in the in a, in, in a Cloud Foundry instance. I will generate certain usages, meaning some, some applications are ca uh, calling certain APIs. So I will generate that in Postman and send it to CF Abacus. Uh, from there, it will be picked by some kind of a uh, integration platform. And that usage will be picked at the end of the month or whatever frequency we define and sent to Revenue Cloud. And in the revenue cloud, we have the concept of the customer and the generation of invoices. So let's, let's hope the demo gods are smiling today. <laughs> so let me, so CF Abacus is really, really small. I mean, in the sense that you can run it in a small footprint or a larger footprint and it can scale in large profiles. So what I have over here is just a clone of a CF repository, CF Abacus repository from here. I mean, all I did was git clone and um, then I've already done the dependency install over here so you don't have to see it downloading the internet. But now I can just say npm start and it starts uh, all the six microservices that uh, CF Abacus has, one for metering, one for uh, collection, one for uh, accumulation, etc. So now that it's started, let's uh, send some uh, usage. So 
in real life, this usage will be sent by your applications. Like your application is either calling this API or it creates, a, if you do it synchronous, then it will be a blocking call. So your application might uh, stay there for uh, some milliseconds. If you want to make it really scalable, then you put these uh, metering API calls in some kind of a queue so that uh, your application keeps going on. Uh, I have these, um, case, it's a little small. So let me put into uh, the current time in this. So So when did the transaction happen? It's in milliseconds. Um, you can see certain things like which, which identify the call, which organization is calling this, and what kind of a resource it is, what kind of plan it is, and then the three APIs that I talked earlier, that I'm going to call three API calls with quantity 10 for reserve, then 100 for query, uh, the pricing API calls, and then another 100 for imagery, okay? So when I send this, it, it, it creates a usage record inside uh, Abacus's uh, uh, persistent storage. In, in production, you typically use MongoDB. Over here, I'm using something called Pouch Server, which is similar concept. And uh, if I go over here and see, so I just sent one, right? I can see there is one record. So for example, I can send like two more, and this will update. And so let's say I'll just do this. So. That's another, so that is second usage being sent. And just for fun, let's send one more. I'm changing the time the transaction is happening because if I send it with the same time, the abacus has a logic where it will say it's a duplicate usage record. See, I tried to send the third usage again and it's a duplicate record, so let's see. If I got all the three uh, usages over here, you can see it's four. Fourth one was a duplicate, which will not be counted. Um, okay, so now we have this usage sitting in our metering engine, which is CF Abacus. Now we need to actually send it as a, so that it generates an invoice. This could keep happening over the month, right? Let's log in into Revenue Cloud now, which is our uh, production instance, so um, I go to revenuecloud.sap, and again, the, we are SAP, we use our own uh, dog food, actually this is not dog food, this is a production application. Champagne. Champagne, okay, better. <laughs> uh, I'll, so the, let's, let me show you a little bit what's over here, so the same APIs that I had, so I, we as an, let's say this travel agency or, or travel organization operates in two markets, which is US West and US East. I have these rate, uh, the rate elements over here. So remember there were three APIs that we are trying to monetize. Uh, all those are set up as attributes to be measured on revenue cloud itself, all right? And I can't sell this as a product. So what I do is I actually create a product. So you can see over here that there is this product called Space Trip Basic. This is what is sold. So think of this as a package that, um, that is being sold. And I can even look at details like, yeah, I'm gonna charge, first time any customer signs up, I'll charge $5. And then <clears throat> these are the various uh, attributes in, in like pricing, for example, uh, reserve space API, 10 API calls are included. The block size is one. I could increase, in, uh, increase block size to 100 or 1,000 or whatever. And then here's the pricing in USD. Um, this is something uh, in CF Abacus. You can do it at a primitive level, but when you are talking with, uh, let's say, the business side of guys, they like this kind of uh, UI. Um, let's 
So that's the product that I'm going to sell. So who do I sell my product to? I sell it to customers. So I will sell this customer to this guy, James Holden. Uh, this guy is the protagonist or the hero in that uh, expense. So anyway. Uh, so James Holden, so when I sell this, it becomes... So these are the things that I've already set up and it becomes a subscription. So this is where I have already sold this product to James Holden and it is here that I see that, yeah, this is the stuff that I have sold. So now let's, so all of our backend data is set up. This, all the accounting stuff is already set up. Now I will again do these uh, calls from here. If I can find my, like that. So now what has happened is that I have metered the usage in CF Abacus. I need to send it to Revenue Cloud so that we can generate a bill, right? That's, that's what we are interested in, that we need to send this. So typically, uh, you would do this uh, OAuth 2 authentication where it's a, um, uh, it generates some kind of a credential so that I can send my API calls in a secure way. I already did uh, at 11.30 because uh, the token is valid for uh, uh, one hour. So I will do the first. So this is the first uh, call that I'm doing. And if you look over here. So this is Abacus to Revenue Cloud now? Yeah, Abacus to Revenue Cloud. So this is the call that I'm making right now. Uh, so remember there were um, three times I made that call. So this is 10, 10, 10, 30. And I send this. And it, it gets created. So all in real life, this will happen using some kind of a integration tool. So I'm, I'm doing it over here. So I sent my calls for... Um, Reserving the trip, now I'll send 300 quantity for this, which is the um, space price. So that's being sent. And another one is, the last call is get space, imagery. And again, that's also 300, so I send that. And now, hopefully what has happened is that this, all these three different API calls have been created as a billing document that can be sent to the customer. Actually, invoice is sent to the customer, so there are a lot of downstream processes. I will not bore you with that. Uh, let's go back to our uh, system over here. So, billing data. And I see that there is something done in June. Uh, our customer was James Holden. And you can see that in this, there are uh, 10 calls for Reserve Space API, and then you'll see that it's only $20. The call was $1 up uh, API call, but it's only $20 in the final bill because 10 calls were already included in the, in the space trip product that I bought. For the others, for example, over here, uh, only nothing is included over here, so you can see that this is probably a three cent call and then, uh, or more than that, but it's 300 multiplied by some number. So 30 USD and then over here 10 was included, so 290. So all of this is accumulated as a one single number, 5290 that we can send to the customer. So that's what happens. That's your day 30 problem being solved by using CF Abacus and then sending it to Revenue Cloud. Any questions? Okay, if, if, if uh, no questions, then uh, I would, uh, hold on, let's go back. So check, check CF Abacus, it's a pretty cool uh, project. Um, it's not just for Cloud Foundry, by the way. It's, you can measure whatever you want. I mean, it could be anything that you are doing inside. 
uh, I have seen on, if you read Hacker News, there's a lot of uh, discussion going on over there in various uh, uh, Ask HN posts where they talk about, hey, I got this giant bill from Amazon or whoever and I want to allocate. You can do those kind of things. You get a giant bill from somebody and you want to validate it, you can use CFABACUS for that. Um, on the billings, on the invoicing side, there is Revenue Cloud, there are other solutions. So with these, you can monetize your APIs or apps. Any concluding thoughts from you? Yeah. Um, what we showed today was a very well, fairly simple B2C example. We didn't yet show, because Revenue Cloud version 1 doesn't yet do it, we didn't yet show that very complex ecosystem and where we would configure the way the different fees get split up. We do currently do it with our hybrid billing and we are bringing that capability to Revenue Cloud. So it's very exciting that platform model is applicable to so many of our customers now. So um, yeah, thanks for your time. Yep, thank you for your time. We have one more question down there. We are doing it. Uh, it's not. It, it's internal use only. We haven't yet brought it to the public release of, of Revenue Cloud. Yeah, but it it was like um, priority. It was a very top five priority for the internal development. They recognise, luckily for us, the issue quite uh, quickly without us having to prompt them because it's it's quite obvious for this ecosystem to work. You need to have that in place. It, it has so um, it has to come from the top. The chargeback model, I mean, if you go from the, you know, I'm a, I'm a platform operator for my internal folks, and then I go to like, hey, you guys are using this much, pay me this, or the internal allocations, right? It, it doesn't work from the bottom up. It always has to be like uh, senior VP of the platform talks to the senior VP of apps saying, hey, you guys have been using platform now, you know, uh, now it's no longer a Skunkworks project, start paying. Yeah. In short, yes. I think internal, even if it's internal funny money, I think for many companies that's been a long-standing, um, opaque kind of process, and this makes it very transparent. So, yeah, there is some level of transparency. And also, if I'm building an app, and this is the, the problem we face a lot, I need to know what my cost is going to be because it affects my floor price, it affects my go-to-market and my pricing and all those type of things. So uh, there is a a path to getting maturity around that whole thing, I would say. It's, it has affected in the sense that what is the most effective way to do it? Um, should, I con should I use VMs, which are expensive to operate, or should I try to allocate more compute into containers? So it, when you start seeing if I make a call or if I do this, it costs me this, then you start taking those decisions. Yeah, I mean, the opportunity here is that you prevent your development from uh, multiple groups developing the same thing over and over, right? And this is the opportunity here, but you need to make that ecosystem work. And it's, it's ongoing. I wouldn't say we've solved all the issues there, but Pankaj is right, it's got to come from the top and you've got to think about it up, up front. So some companies are building their own thing, what we're doing for Revenue Cloud, and it's not just for API monetization, it's for any SaaS or any, any product you want. We're, we're trying to solve those problems for a broad base of our customers because we've been through it. We've seen it firsthand. I think we're out of time. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.